Alright, thanks for watching and today I would like to solve a very neat problem that I found on the UCI Math Instagram page. Namely, suppose you have three distinct points on the parabola y equals x squared such that the normal lines intersect at the single point, just like here. And what we want to show is that the sum of the x coordinates here a, b and c equal to zero. And you'll see it's a very nice problem that just involves a little bit of calculus and a little bit of algebra. So let's get right into this. And here what we need to do, we need to argue in terms of cases because it actually depends if one of the points is zero or not. So case one, suppose, again without loss of generality, that one of the, intercept, one of the intercepts is zero. So a equals zero, what does that mean in terms of the picture? Well, if let's say a equals zero, then actually it means that one of the normal lines has to be the vertical line, so x equals zero. So we already know that x equals zero is a normal line, but what about the other ones, so b and c? Well, there's not much we can say about this other than the actual equations, and let me now remind you the equations of the normal lines. Well, one is, well, because it goes to b comma b squared, it is y minus b squared. And then what is the slope? Remember the negative reciprocal. So since y equals x squared, y prime is 2x, so the negative reciprocal is minus 1 over 2b, or not 2b times x minus b. And similar for c, we get y minus c squared equals minus 1 over 2c times x minus c. Now here's the thing. Focus now on the point of intersection. Then what do we know? On the one hand, we know that x equals 0. So if you kind of look at the common normal line, we can actually plug in x equals 0 here and x equals 0 here. And what's nice is, is that the, uh, this simplifies to simply 1 half. So this equals 1 half, this equals 1 half. And in particular, kind of putting those two together and going around, what we get is that y minus b squared equals y minus c squared. So y minus b squared equals y minus c squared. And then you can solve for this. So what we get is that b squared equals c squared. Now, you might say that, OK, b equals c. But remember, we assume it's distinct. So actually, we don't have b equals c, but the other way, namely, b equals minus c. And that's why you know this plus minus is actually very crucial here. But then the question is, what is the sum of the intercepts? It's actually quite neat, because the sum, well, it's a plus b plus c. But we assume that a was 0, so we have 0. b is minus c, so minus c plus c, and that gives you 0. So in this boring case, we actually have that the sum of the intercepts is 0. And now let's look at the more interesting case. All right, now suppose that none of the a, b, c are zero, then what we really have to do, we have to look at the full equations of the three normal lines, which I like to remind you is y minus a squared equals one minus one over two a, x minus a, y minus b squared equals minus one over two b, x minus b, and y minus c squared equals minus 1 over 2c, x minus c. And then what we have to do is just a little bit of algebra. And by the way, here's where the calculus stops. For instance, what we can do, we can do uh, maybe this minus this. So this equation minus this equation. Then what happens is that the y's cancel out. And what you end up with, it's b squared minus a squared. And then here also there's a cancellation, because remember this becomes 1 half. This becomes 1 half, so you're left with 1 over 2b minus 1 over 2a times x 
which then you can simply, you can simply simplify to a minus b over 2ab, which is common denominator, times x. And then what you can do, you can simply solve for x, so x equals b squared minus a squared times 2ab over a minus b. But remember, b squared minus a squared, it's b minus a times b plus a over a minus b times 2ab, which in the end simplifies simply to minus 2ab times a plus b. So that is one expression for x, but the nice thing is you can just simply repeat this with the second and third equations and the first and third equations, and in the end you get a very nice identity for x. And then in the end what you get is the following nice identity for x, which I would like to remind you is the common point of intersection, namely x is minus 2ab times a plus b, and minus 2ac times a plus c, and minus 2bc times b plus c. But this last one doesn't really matter, let's just look at the first two, and let's see if we can simplify some things. So what we get is minus 2ab, times a plus b equals minus 2ac times a plus c. Well, the minus 2 we can cancel out. But now we can also cancel out a. Why? Because in this case we assume none of a and b, c are 0. So that's completely legit. And then what you can do, you can just expand this out. So ab plus b squared equals ac plus c squared, and then put all the squares on the left hand side, so b squared minus c squared equals ac minus ab, okay. and then uh, for instance b minus c times b plus c equals a c minus b, and again you'll see it'll actually flow like bread and butter because now we can cancel b minus c and c minus b except with the extra minus sign and so what we get is that b plus c equals minus a and then putting minus a on the left hand side we get a plus b plus c equals zero. So we have shown in fact that the sum of the x-intercepts is zero. Isn't that cool? Like how suddenly from this weird calculation the sum comes up. Well, this is math for you. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.